Hello, everybody. I'm Omar Raines, hosting today another episode of Old Tales of Nevada, past and present. Regular host John O'Brien is actually with us today. He just returned from Mexico. He'll be in this chair, I'm sure, next week. And we have a fascinating guest today and a great story. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. Hi there. I'm Hugh Roy Marshall of the Marshall Mint in Virginia City, Nevada. I'm proud to announce that our seven ingot set honoring the V&T Railroad is now finished. That's right, Uroy. These beautiful 999 silver ingots celebrate the engines from the world famous VT Railroad and honor Nevada's sesquicentennial. These limited edition treasures can be purchased only at the Marshall Mint in Virginia City, Nevada. Or visit us at marshallmint.com to get yours today. All of us at Shoe Man's Custom Cycle are ready to get you and your Harley ready for the road. From oil and tire changes to high performance engine upgrades and dyno tuning, we at Shoe Men's have got you covered with experienced factory certified mechanics and a full service machine shop loaded with parts and accessories. Shoe Man's Custom Cycle has been serving Northern Nevada since 1988. So ride on down to Shoe Man's Custom Cycle at 275 East 4th Street in downtown Reno. Shoe Man's Custom Cycle, we're the biker's bike shop. Welcome back, everybody. Again, I'm Omar Reigns. want to introduce our co-host and benefactor, Hugh Roy Marshall. Hey, how you doing? Good to Robert? have you, as always, Hugh Roy. And our special guest today, Dr. Alan Walker, president of Sierra Nevada College. Welcome, but before, before we get to Alan, we ordinarily start this program with an explanation of why we do this program. Hugh Roy, can you do that? You betcha. Yeah, we first of all started doing this show as a radio show for five years, and then we got on the TV doing the show. And the reason why we do this show is to basically educate people on why Nevada is such a wonderful historic state in the United States. Because not very many people know, really, that if it weren't for Nevada after the Civil War, we may not have been the United States of America because we owed more to France, Germany, and England than what we're worth. Today we owe more than what we're worth to Japan, Saudi Arabia, and China, but they're in bad shape too. <laughs> so we have a whole different program today. But yes, this program is meant to record people's lives who have been uh, of some real significance in the area. And what I do is uh, work on silver and gold and different minerals. Um, very often uh, you, you will find uh, uh, silver crystals or gold crystals, but it's very rare to find uh, specimens that have both gold and silver crystals forming on them. It makes them quite, quite rare. And uh, Nevada is very famous as a state because we produce about 9% of all the gold that's produced on the planet every year. And gold is very important to us because really it's the only money that anybody trusts. But we certainly welcome uh, this gentleman from the Sierra College and looking forward to hearing all about it up there. Well, another great thing about Sierra Nevada College, and it speaks to Nevada as well, is that it's nestled right near the shores of Lake Tahoe. Yep. Sierra Nevada College is the academic gem of the Sierras. And Dr. Alan Walker, we're going to call you Alan if it's okay with you. Absolutely. Uh, is our guest again today. And uh, when I first met Alan, he had just traveled almost 3,000 miles across country on a motorcycle to assume his presence. That's a good long trip. <laughs> I doubt that's ever been done by a college or university president in the history of this country. But you arrived just in time to introduce uh, Isabel Allende, the Nobel uh, Prize winning uh, novelist. Uh, that's right. That was September 19th, as I recall. That's and right. Okay. I arrived a few hours ahead of uh, introducing uh, Isabel. Uh, terrific event, great turnout, uh, wonderful speaker. Uh, that's a great series, uh, and we appreciate the support we get from Nancy Benz, who's endowed that, yes. that annual, or that, uh, uh, that speaking event every year, every other year, actually. Well... When you arrived, you uh, began living in the dorms and eating in the cafeteria with students. That's right. Are you still doing that? It's a great way to uh, get to know a lot of students, which I have uh, over this last two semesters. So 
Uh, I spent the fall semester and the spring semester living in the in the in a res hall in a visiting faculty suite they call it. Uh, great way to uh, get immersed into the college community. Great way to get to know a lot of students and for them to get to know me. So it's been a it's been a terrific experience uh, doing that. Well, that's important because you're not divorced from the student community. You're, no, and especially you're you're in a small college it. like this. On a campus. How, like how many students you guys have, Alan? We have about 500 students on the Incline campus and another 500 students that are split between our centers in Reno, our centers in Vegas, and our students who study online for, for their degrees. So it's about 1,000 oh. students total, but on the Incline campus, 500. And it's a very, as you might suspect, it's a very close knit community. Students get to know faculty and, and vice versa on a very personal basis as well as staff and uh, so it was a great way to, to get started there and get to know everybody and, and on a very personal level which is a strength that Sierra Nevada College really offers compared to uh, schools that you might go to what I call big box schools where you sit in an auditorium Homer with two or three hundred other freshmen you know some me because I went to UC Berkeley <laughs> <laughs> I had to get that in uh, where you're sitting in an auditorium with two or three hundred other freshmen, you know, taking Social 101, and, and uh, that's not the kind of experience we, we provide and we offer at Sierra Nevada College. They, they are small class sizes. Faculty get their, to know their students on a first name basis as undergrads, and you know that's uh, uh, that doesn't always happen in higher ed. Let me ask this: uh, You've been there now for your first year. I've been there a little over nine months. Yeah, but throughout the school year. Right. And I'd like to know your impression, now that you've been there that period of time, of the Board of Trustees, of the faculty and staff, most importantly, of the students. You know, especially living in a res hall, obviously I've gotten to know the student body uh, quite well. And uh, they are terrific students. Very smart, very independent, very entrepreneurial. Uh, great, great students. Uh, I don't know that I've been around a, a better student body in my career in higher ed. The board, uh, you know, it's been, a, it's been a great opportunity working with the board. They are highly experienced, highly talented, and a highly dedicated group of individuals who have the best interests of the college in mind. So uh, that's very important, obviously, to a president to be able to work with a board like that. So I've been very, very fortunate, and I have appreciated their support uh, and their expertise. And what about the faculty? Because you have an outstanding faculty for a small college. Lake Tahoe, no doubt, attracts some of these people because they're top notch. Absolutely. We, we do have a great faculty. And, you know, faculty are really the heart of, of, of what we do. I mean, the core mission here is, is to help students learn. Right. And that happens between faculty and students. And, uh, you know, I uh, often think about my college days, and, and, and you, you could do the same, I'm sure. And probably very few of us would remember who the president of the school was when, when we were undergrads. I certainly can. <laughs> but uh, but uh, a lot of us remember particularly faculty members who, you know, oh, yeah. who mentored us, took us under their wing, and that certainly uh, was it, my situation as well as an undergrad and, and even in grad school. So we have great faculty. And what's, what's nice about Sierra Nevada College is our faculty do a lot of work in terms of their own scholarship uh, research. Uh, they publish and do things like that, which most faculty do. But their real passion, Homer, is with teaching. And that's what Sierra Nevada College that's really focuses about. on, which I think is important, particularly at the undergraduate level. It's all about teaching, and faculty love to be in the classroom. They love to teach. They are very good at it. Uh, and they care about what their students are learning. Well, the focus of any good college or university has to be the student. That's right. Sierra Nevada College is very student-centered. It's one of the things that attracted me to come to Sierra Nevada College. What about the quality of the students? Now that you've had a year to assess that. Great, great students, as I mentioned before. Uh, we, have a, we have a high retention rate. We have a high graduation rate. It's above the national average. Uh, and I see the demographic incoming student profile continuing to increase in terms of quality, average ATC scores coming in, ACT scores and GPAs. I see an upward trend uh, over the next few years. Uh, great students, again, very entrepreneurial. I've had an opportunity now to see students who are graduating 
go on and experience uh, early success in their careers. Uh, we stay in touch with a lot of them through our uh, alumni contacts and, and so forth. I, I just I just love them. Great, great students. Let me ask, what about international students? What kind of outreach do you have? Yeah, we, you know, we have a number of international students uh, from China, for example. We've got some Chinese students. Some of our international students uh, come as a result of their participation in athletics. And later on in the program, we'll talk a little bit about how our ski and snowboarding teams did this year at the national yeah. championships. Yeah. But there's a significant number of those uh, student athletes who are, uh, for example, are uh, from uh, the European uh, country. So that brings some international students uh, to SNC as well. Insofar as outreach to China is concerned, is that in large measure due to the efforts of Tara Madden Dent? Currently, she's she's helping us with that effort. Uh, Tim Coe, who runs our ski resort management program, right. is involved with that. You know, as you know, China is preparing for the Winter Olympics in a few years, and the ski industry there is projected to experience major growth. Yeah. Uh, and so, there's some opportunities there for us. I have read. This is difficult to believe, not because I've been to China 11 times, but I have read that China anticipates having 300 million right. skiers that's right. in the next decade. That's, that's the figure That's the population well, of the United million. States. Correct. I mean, what an industry what, to be on the ground floor of. That's, that's right. That's right. So, again, tremendous opportunity going, going forward. Wow. And you have an outreach program to South Africa or some... We have a study abroad and some uh, intensive learning experience uh, on the ground in South Africa every year uh, where students go and, and do projects and so forth. In fact, uh, there was a group that just, just went on, on the annual, that annual trip. How many students go? Uh, about 20 or so. Are they in Cape Town, Johannesburg, Pretoria? You know, I'm not sure Durban? exactly what, the, what locations they go to in, okay. in, in Africa. Okay, good, good. Well, you started to talk about collaborative arrangements, and I think that is critical to what Sierra Nevada College is doing right now, and in some cases, fairly unique. Um, what about the community college at South Lake Tahoe and what you're doing there? Yeah, you, you know, partnerships are going to be key to one of the keys to key strategies to uh, Sierra Nevada College's future going forward. And, uh, we're engaged in a new partnership now, which is, as I mentioned before, uh, we have a, we've had a satellite campus in Reno and a satellite campus in Vegas for a number of years now, and those mm -hmm. two locations offer graduate programs and teacher education, just one program at both of those locations. And we've got about 500 students between the two of them. We're opening up our third center this fall on the campus of Lake Tahoe Community College. And it's going to be Great. unique as compared to uh, our locations in Reno and Vegas in so much as for the first time we'll be offering undergraduate programs off the main campus for the first time. And this fall we're going to roll it out with uh, an undergraduate program in global business management. Great. Now in addition to undergraduate, could the students there continue even in that infrastructure, in that environment, in that venue to take upper uh, division courses and graduate? Well, the way this, is, the way this works is they, they will complete two years with Lake Tahoe Community right. College, finish an associate's degree, and then uh, transfer into Sierra Nevada College's upper division business courses. So they complete, can complete a bachelor's degree in business on the campus of Lake Tahoe Community College. So they don't That's have good. to commute. Almost an hour back and forth each way. That's right. They could complete the whole for division part towards their bachelor's degree. Well, look, we're going to explore that a bit further. But right now, we're going to take a break. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. Find that perfect summer fashion at Boutique Elegante. For the beach, boating at the lake, a patio party, or those summer outings, we offer great prices, beautiful styling, and your own personalized service. All of this and so much more at Boutique Elegante. 
Buy Nevada First Gift Shop and Visitor Center at the Reno Town Mall is the place to buy local Nevada-owned products. There is over 4,000 square feet of unique items to choose from. Art, jewelry, books, music, inventions, clothing, candy, pottery, toys, even Nevada-made wine and more. Why, you can even purchase a gift basket full of Nevada-owned products. Buy Nevada First Gift Shop located at the Reno Town Mall, 4001 Virginia Street in Reno. Buy local first. Deluxe Travel, locally owned and operating since 1991, is the home for travel to Mexico and Central and South America. The crew at Deluxe Travel is bilingual, trustworthy, thorough, and caring. They will do everything possible to make your dream vacation the best it can be. Now is the time to book for winter travel. So stop by the office at 100 California Avenue or call 686-7000. You can also check us out on our website at DeluxeTravelLTD.com. At Deluxe Travel, we sell dreams. A minute plan. Find that perfect summer fashion at Boutique Elegante. For the beach, boating at the lake, a patio party, or those summer outings, we offer great prices, beautiful styling, and your own personalized service. All of this and so much more at Boutique Elegante. All of us at Shoe Man's Custom Cycle are ready to get you and your Harley ready for the road. From oil and tire changes to high-performance engine upgrades and dyno tuning, we at Shoe Men's have got you covered with experienced factory certified mechanics and a full service machine shop loaded with parts and accessories. Shoe Men's Custom Cycle has been serving Northern Nevada since 1988. So ride right on down to Shoe Men's Custom Cycle at 275 East 4th Street in downtown Reno. Shoe Men's Custom Cycle. We're the Bikers Bike Shop. Old Tales of Nevada Past and Present, a TV show that tells the story of Nevada's past, present, and future. Whether it's mining, gaming, agriculture, business, music, art, entrepreneurs, authors, we cover it all on Old Tales of Nevada Past and Present. Why do we do it? To bring pride to those who live in Nevada. Old Tales of Nevada Past and Present, we make history live for pride of Nevada. Watch the show every Sunday at 7 a.m. on the CW Network on Charter Channel 6 or 790 or Dish and Direct TV on Channel 46. Again, welcome back. We're talking to Alan Walker, President of Sierra Nevada College. And Alan, with, that sounds like an extraordinary program that you're developing, where you can actually provide a bachelor's degree. They don't have to leave their campus. Are you exploring doing that with any of the other community colleges? Uh, we will going forward, but right now we're focused with Lake Tahoe Community College as a first partnership of, of this kind. And really the idea here is to offer an opportunity for those students down on the South Shore who, who are uh, completing associate degrees in Lake Tahoe Community College to continue on towards bachelor's degrees, uh, not only in business, but uh, this spring of 2017, we want to roll out an undergraduate degree in teacher education on, the, on their campus, the upper division, uh, and maybe psychology, and then a year from this fall, something along the ski resort management, hospitality management, a hybrid program of some kind. We think this is a model in terms of partnerships within higher education because it's a matter of convenience for students down there. Sure. As you pointed out earlier in the show, they can complete a whole bachelor's degree without necessarily com commuting or even having to go online to do it. Uh, they'll have the option of completing those bachelor's degree face-to-face and it's also a matter of, of co the cost of higher education. This model begins to address that challenge that you hear about across the country, the cost of higher education, even in the presidential campaign. Mm -hmm. And because we're utilizing uh, the facilities at Lake Tahoe Community College and lowering the cost of overhead and those kinds of things, we can pass some of those savings on to students. So they realize uh, a discount on tuition going through, as a result of this partnership between Sierra Nevada College and, and LTCC. Going forward, uh, I, I am exploring uh, the, uh, the possibility of other such uh, Sierra Nevada College centers on the campuses of other community and colleges, including those some, some here in Nevada, uh, both in the Nevada side and the California side. So this is sort of our... our uh, uh, the model we're going to use and uh, and uh, is our, uh, our prototype going forward. Well, you surely have the opportunity, so it works out if you enjoy success at South Lake Tahoe. We, there are community colleges here in Reno, in Carson City, in Henderson. 
which right. are near Las Vegas, right. um, and certainly Sierra, now Sierra College in California, but close, because so many people get the names mixed up. And even American River College, maybe, in Sacramento. That's, That's right. And we have, you know, we have relationships with all those schools. Historically, a certain number of students that have graduated from all of those schools, traditional students, have transferred uh, to the Incline campus uh, of, of Sierra Nevada College. But there's a significant number of students who attend community colleges for a reason, which is a lot of them are place-bound for one reason or another. Mm -hmm. A lot of them are... are non-traditional students, they have family and job obligations that make it difficult for them to commute or especially to relocate. So this reaches that demographic of, of, of student for the first time through uh, Sierra Nevada College. Alan, and this I, is a, this, I'm, I'm kind of well, curious, what, what is the cost of your, of your university uh, up there? You know, we uh, th there's the retail cost but it really doesn't mean too much because the actual price students pay comes after tuition discounting, it comes after internal financial aid, uh, Pell Grant money, other sources of scholarships. The last time I looked, the average out-of-pocket cost for tuition only on the Incline campus was about $11,000 or so a year. Which is pretty reasonable for a private. And that's private comparative company. to UNR and uh, yeah, LBR. So, uh, I mean, if you look up the retail, if you look up the retail cost well. in the catalog, I think it's somewhere around thirty thousand. But the fact of the matter is, virtually no students pay that because almost all our students receive some kind oh, of some financial kind of aid. Financial aid. That's right. Right. And this is a this partnership with the community colleges I'm describing uh, is a model I've used at other institutions. Hmm. as well. So this In is Iowa or Ohio or all of the above. I've used this model uh, when I was uh, in Michigan at a university and I used this model when I was president of an institution in uh, Iowa. And so this is not an experiment. This is a tried and proven model. Uh, it's a little bit unique still in higher ed. You don't see a lot of this First one I've heard of co cooperation. So we're, we will be uh, a leader as it relates to this in the region here certainly. But it's not uh, something I haven't done before. It's impressive that the community college in South Lake Tahoe, allow, they will be allowing you, I take it, to use their infrastructure, their buildings. You don't have to. That's right. In phase one, which costs. is the first four terms starting this fall and, and so forth, uh, we'll be using their classroom and office space in their existing buildings. And again, uh, that lowers the cost and makes it, uh, allows us to pass on some of those savings to their students who, who are down there who want to participate. And there's been a lot of demand for uh, four-year programs down the South Shore. So we're experiencing a lot of support and a lot of enthusiasm for, for this rollout. Uh, so it's a great, it's a great partnership. Uh, I, I see it uh, doing great things, including, uh, you know, Lake Tahoe Community College had a donor step up uh, who has made it possible for them to begin construction on a new building on their campus this fall, a uh, higher ed center that will physically house this, this kind of partnership going forward once it's built. Oh, yeah, great. But meanwhile, they're, yeah, they're letting us use their uh, classroom and office space, and that's important. You referred to disadvantaged uh, students who really experience difficulty even going to a community college. Do you, you, you have a, an aggressive uh, online program as well? We have programs we offer online. Uh, and certainly th that's an option, and I suspect there will be scenarios where we have students down on Lake Tahoe Community College who are taking upper division courses, working on their bachelor's degree through us, and in some cases they'll be taking some courses face-to-face, -face, but they have the option to take other courses online if they want to speed up their progress because they get, have the option of going uh, either way. Tell us about, uh, you mentioned earlier that you have apparently rented facilities in Las Vegas and in Reno as well? That's right. How have those worked out, the satellite campuses? They've, they've, been, they've been very successful and they have experienced consistent enrollment growth over the 10 years that they've been around. And we, we lease commercial executive office space uh, in, both of those, in both of those locations. And as I mentioned, we've got two, or two 250 students, 300 students approximately at, at, at those locations. 
so they've they've been successful. I think uh, strategically, those, it was a good move on the college's part to do that, especially considering that the programs that they're running there are graduate programs in teacher ed, and we all know about the teacher ed, teacher shortage in Nevada, <laughs> which uh, the college is proud to be uh, address helping to address for the state. That's good. good. Well, with the introduction of the Tahoe Reno Industrial Park and Tesla and everything else, that's going to be an increasing, increasing problem, one that already exists, but it's going to become even more significant. It's particularly acute in southern Nevada, obviously, where the last time I uh, looked at the data, they, were, uh, they had about 900 teachers' positions that were vacant. So, uh, you know, the state has, been, has taken a very proactive approach in providing financial support. We participate in the Teach Nevada Scholarship Program, so the state underwrites some of the tuition costs for students who want to become teachers, and they're taking our programs through our uh, satellite location in in, uh, in the Las Vegas area. Do you do you uh, you don't have the infrastructure there? Uh, do you see that possibly happening as well, where you're going to have a permanent place in either Reno or Vegas? Yeah, it could happen. Depends on uh, it depends on the growth of enrollment and and, and some other factors. But I wouldn't rule that out. Uh, I have been at other institutions that have done that kind of thing. They have evolved uh, academic extension centers and started out, you know, uh, with lease space and then uh, building their own facilities, owned and operated. I'll give you an example of a very unique partnership that started with a community college when I was in Michigan. <coughs> and uh, Western Michigan University had a center on the uh, campus of Lake Michigan College, which is a community college in southwestern Michigan. And uh, eventually, uh, the program got big enough that the state legislature appropriated money, uh, and uh, uh, the university built a standalone building on their campus. Hmm. But it was a university-owned and operated building, about forty thousand square foot uh, building. But it was on the campus of Lake Michigan College, so they they donated the land, and the legislature helped fund the building and the university owned and operated that building. So that was a very unique partnership, one, one of uh, one of its unique uh, in, the, in the region at the time. Well, you have such an impressive collaborative program right now with other institutions. Um, I think before we go into that, we'll take another short break, come back and discuss some of those. Look what's in your carpet and tile. Dirty, nasty dust mites, bacteria, germs, and pet odor. <coughs> Make the right choice and call A Choice Carpet and Tile Cleaning today. They use a two-step system that removes all that nasty stuff from your carpet and tile, and they offer baby-safe cleaning products. Call A Choice today. The first 25 customers to call will get three rooms cleaned for the price of two. Call today, 745-1863. Somewhere in Time is the place to find the unexpected gift that will be treasured for all time with one of the largest beer and sun purple glassware collections on the West Coast. Vintage Toys, Roseville, Flow Blue, Casino and Brothel Memorabilia, Fenton Glassware, Antique Kerosene Lamps, Sports Memorabilia, Vintage Neon, and Automobile Ads. Yes, the unexpected. Find a gift that will be treasured for all time at Somewhere in Time in Reno. All of us at Shoeman's Custom Cycle are ready to get you and your Harley ready for the road. From oil and tire changes to high-performance engine upgrades and dyno tuning, we at Shoeman's have got you covered with experienced factory certified mechanics and a full-service machine shop loaded with parts and accessories. Shoeman's Custom Cycle has been serving Northern Nevada since 1988. So ride on down to Shoeman's Custom Cycle at 275 East 4th Street in downtown Reno. Shoeman's Custom Cycle, we're the biker's bike shop. Hi there, I'm Leroy Marshall of the Marshall Mint in Virginia City, Nevada. I'm proud to announce that our seven ingot set honoring the V&T Railroad is now finished. That's right, Uroy. These beautiful 999 silver ingots celebrate the engines from the world-famous V&T Railroad and honor Nevada's sesquicentennial. These limited edition treasures can be purchased only at the Marshall Mint in Virginia City, Nevada. Or visit us at marshallmint.com to get yours today.
Again, welcome back to this episode of Old Tales from Nevada. I want to introduce myself again, Omer Rains, but also the co-host, Hugh Roy Marshall. Hey, Omer. And our special guest today, Dr. Alan Walker, president of Sierra Nevada College. So, Alan, when we stopped uh, to take this break, uh, we were going to, I think, address some of the other collaborative arrangements. I mean, I know with University of California Davis, with UNR, uh, DRI, uh, Bell Corporation, certainly Middlebury, and so on and so forth. It's, it's pretty impressive what's happening right now. Uh, can you address some of those relationships? Well, you mentioned Middlebury. Uh, Midcore, which is a summer program that Middlebury offers every year, is currently happening right on our campus. And it has certainly grown. It's, it, it is an incubator for entrepreneurial thinking, students who who are creative uh, and want to hone their leadership skills and so forth. Uh, and they get to do that on the North Shore of Lake Tahoe every summer. <laughs> that, that, you know, that's a great example of a partnership that's grown over the years. Uh, it's been around three or four years. It started with about 30 students. And this year they have, we have about 74 students in that mini program. Uh, I had an opportunity to go back to Middlebury College, by the way, in Vermont over the winter. They do a on-campus version of Midcore every year on their, on their Vermont campus. And I would, had an opportunity to be a judge and, and participate in Midcore as a judge uh, back in February. So I got to know the, the program uh, really, really well. Uh, so that's been a that's been a huge uh, a huge success. Obviously, UC Davis, uh, with their research center on the cam- on our campus, has been a great uh, success as well. Uh, and, and all of the other uh, partnerships that you mentioned, including the one we talked about earlier in this program, our newest one with Lake Tahoe Community College and and uh, colleges in the community colleges in the future going going forward. I'd like to elaborate on a couple of things you mentioned, a couple of colleges. Middlebury may not be known to the average viewer, but you know, I know, all of us in this room I'm sure know, that it's one of the most prestigious colleges in the world. Yeah, it has a great, it has a great reputation, particularly in the East Coast where, you know, located in... in and, and abroad. Exactly. Uh, they, have a, they have a well-known... Uh, language program uh, uh, where you can, you know, where they teach uh, a number of foreign languages. Uh, that certainly has been part of their marquee. Uh, but they're, they're a terrific uh, liberal arts college, uh, very, very successful, uh, very prestigious in higher ed circles. What do you mean by liberal arts? You know, uh, you often hear the moniker uh, liberal arts used in conjunction with Sierra Nevada College as uh, Nevada's only private four-year liberal arts institution. Certainly, uh, liberal arts, in terms of the kind of curriculum, has always been a part of the institution. It's, uh, it's undergirds many of the programs. Uh, but in many ways, Sierra Nevada College is much more comprehensive than a typical liberal arts college, uh, even different from, from Middlebury in that regard. Because for many years now, uh, in fact, you can go back 30 years and find uh, programs that are not traditional liberal arts programs that Sierra Nevada College has offered. Programs in hospitality management, for example, uh, our current ski resort management program. The largest program we have in terms of, of majors is our business program. Those aren't typical liberal arts uh, majors. However, uh, the core of the curriculum st- still has a strong liberal arts uh, influence to it. Uh, we certainly have a strong, uh, some strong traditional liberal arts uh, majors in the fine arts area, uh, particularly visual, visual fine arts. Uh, we have the Holman Arts Art Center, right. uh, and we've got a very strong reputation for uh, some some of the arts, and we have a very strong humanities department. Uh, and some of those things that you do find at a uh, liberal arts college, but I would have to say that uh, we're a much more we're, we're much more comprehensive than just uh, uh, sort of a typical liberal arts college in that regard. But it does sound as though at the heart of your curriculum, it, you've got a class. It's still liberal very, arts you know, and I, I think the ideal scenario here. I've always been a strong proponent, even in, even for schools that have professional programs, when those professional programs. Uh, are undergirded with a strong liberal arts uh, focus, 
That's the best of both worlds, Omar. The best of both worlds. UC Davis, um, you know, on campus has the Tahoe Environmental Sciences Center. It has the Turk program, uh, TCES, Tahoe Center for Environmental Sciences. That's right. Uh, those are, again, renowned throughout the country, and they're right on the campus of Sierra Nevada College. They're it happened, owned, right. It happened building. for a number of years, and uh, a great partner, and, and you know, they don't, they don't compete uh, with Sierra Nevada College because the, the UC Davis presence on, on the campus is really all about research. So they actually don't teach classes, uh, UC Davis classes on, on the campus. What they do is very important research having to do with the preservation of, of the lake, which we, you know, we all have an interest in, both on the Nevada side and on the California side. So it's, it's been a terrific partnership, uh, and we look forward to many years in the future of, of the kind of success we've had so far with them. It's a really important program, as you I mentioned uh, off camera recently, because let's face it, Lake Tahoe is one of the most photographed spots in the entire world. It is arguably the most beautiful lake in the world, certainly the most famous in North America. And uh, it is a national treasure. Would have been a national park, but for the fact that when the national park system developed, Teddy Roosevelt, Gifford Pinchot, and others, um, there had been already a lot of development take place because of the writings of Mark Twain, John Muir, and others that, that attracted a lot of people to uh, come build homes, especially from the San Francisco area at the time. Um, Are you guys much into environmental science or that thing uh, as, as it pertains to reclamation? And uh, that's, that's uh, you know, a big part of the mining activities is reclamation. Uh, well, right. Yeah, we, 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 have, we have programs in the sciences, particularly environmental science as well. Yeah, that's right. And I, I think I think the challenge going forward is to um, preserve uh, the lake, you know, as much as possible, so that it remains one of the most photographed locations in the world. I mean, that that's the challenge, and that certainly is the the goal UC Davis has as it relates to uh, lake uh, purity and, and maintaining the, the clarity of the lake, which it, it's world famous for. So that, that's the challenge, uh, while at the same time providing for uh, the economic development that both California and Nevada are inter interested in as well. Now, are, are you involved, is the college directly involved in the exchange program that takes place every year between Lake Tahoe, scientists coming here from all over the world, and Lake Baikal in Siberia, the world's largest lake? I'm not familiar with that. That must be a UC Davis program. I'm not actually familiar with what you're okay. describing. Yeah, it's a very important program. Insofar as Vail Corporation, how does that come into play? You know, we have contacts with Vail Corporation primarily through our ski resort management program, and Tim Coe is the director of that program. Yes. He's been with us uh, a long time. Uh, we place a lot of students, graduates with, with Vail uh, and other other ski uh, resorts uh, around the country. It, it really is one of our unique programs. Uh, there aren't that many bachelor's degree programs specifically in, in ski resort management. And uh, the interesting thing is uh, down in uh, the South Shore as we move forward with our partnership with Lake Tahoe Community College, we want, as I mentioned earlier in the show, uh, a year from this fall, we want to be able to offer Hybrid, hybrid program that takes some of our ski resort management courses and combines them with broader courses in hospitality management uh, because we know that that's also a need that the community has expressed uh, down on the South Shore, uh, something like that, given their uh, gaming industry down there and they have a major ski resort, uh, which is a Vail uh, resort down there, and, uh, and their, uh, their hotel motel. Uh, industry down there. So they have some specialized needs and we'll be in a great position to work with LTCC to meet those needs going forward in the future. Great. Is there any other college in the country that has the winter sports recreation environment 
that you enjoy Lake Tahoe? <laughs> you know, there's a, there's rankings every year in a number of uh, ski magazines. You know, best college ski town, <laughs> uh, and uh, we uh, we you can find uh, Sierra Nevada College in those rankings. Usually quite high, uh, number one, number two, number three, some, somewhere like that. I can tell you one thing for certain: there are very few, if any, colleges uh, in the kind of location we're at with the kind of caliber ski and snowboard teams we have, which are really legacy marquee sports have been around almost since the very beginning of the college. Uh, in fact, I had an opportunity to go to Lake Placid and to watch our uh, ski and snowboard teams at the uh, USCSA Collegiate National Championships in Lake Placid, which was in, in March. Uh, and they took, uh, they brought a lot of medals home uh, from that trip. Uh, un unbelievable. In fact, uh, I, had to, I had to bring a, a report just to uh, just to remind myself of all the championships. So this year they won between individual and team. These are, these are national championships now. Number one right, right. between individual and team, they took away 26 individual champion gold medals at the, at the USCSA national championship at Lake Placid, uh, which included uh, in terms of overall team, the women uh, took uh, top spot. For alpine skiing, uh, the uh, men took top spot for snowboarding. Uh, uh, in, in our slalom uh, event, the women were in first place. We had a number of individuals, uh, both men and women, and snowboarders uh, who were national champions, and so forth. The list goes goes on and on. Uh, Un unbelievable legacy, Coach. Alan, uh, you, let's let's let me, let me ask, me ask Alan a question here. Do, do you do you snowboard or do you ski? I ski. Or do you both? Be before you go there, I ski. we're going to take what another do you short, do, uh, we're gonna take another you short break. And uh, mm -hmm. Old Tales of Nevada, past and present, we'll be right back. Stay tuned. Find that perfect summer fashion at Boutique Elegante. For the beach, boating at the lake, a patio party, or those summer outings we offer. Great prices, beautiful styling, and your own personalized service. All of this and so much more at Boutique Elegante. Old Tales of Nevada, Past and Present, a TV show that tells the story of Nevada's past, present, and future. Whether it's mining, gaming, agriculture, business, music, art, entrepreneurs, authors, we cover it all on Old Tales of Nevada, Past and Present. Why do we do it? To bring pride to those who live in Nevada. Old Tales of Nevada, Past and Present, we make history live for pride of Nevada. Watch the show every Sunday at 7 a.m. on the CW Network on Charter Channel 6 or 790 or Dish and Direct TV on Channel 46. Find that perfect summer fashion at Boutique Elegante. For the beach, boating at the lake, a patio party, or those summer outings we offer. Great prices, beautiful styling, and your own personalized service. All of this and so much more at Boutique Elegante. Buy Nevada First Gift Shop and Visitor Center at the Reno Town Mall is the place to buy local Nevada-owned products. There is over 4,000 square feet of unique items to choose from. Art, jewelry, books, music, inventions, clothing, candy, pottery, toys, even Nevada-made wine and more. Why, you can even purchase a gift basket full of Nevada-owned products. Buy Nevada First Gift Shop located at the Reno Town Mall, 4001 Virginia Street in Reno. Buy local first. All of us at Shoe Man's Custom Cycle are ready to get you and your Harley ready for the road. From oil and tire changes to high-performance engine upgrades and dyno tuning, we at Shoe Man's have got you covered with experienced factory certified mechanics and a full-service machine shop loaded with parts and accessories. Shoe Man's Custom Cycle has been serving Northern Nevada since 1988. So ride on down to Shoe Man's Custom Cycle at 275 East 4th Street in downtown Reno. Shoe Man's Custom Cycle, we're the biker's bike shop. Deluxe Travel, locally owned and operating since 1991, is a home for travel to Mexico and Central and South America. The crew at Deluxe Travel is bilingual, trustworthy, thorough, and caring. They will do everything possible to make your dream vacation the best it can be. Now is the time to book for winter travel, so stop by the office at 100 California Avenue or call 686-7000. You can also check us out on our website at DeluxeTravelLTD.com. At Deluxe Travel, we sell dreams. Come in and plan yours. 
Hi there, I'm Hugh Roy Marshall of the Marshall Mint in Virginia City, Nevada. I'm proud to announce that our seven ingot set honoring the V&T Railroad is now finished. That's right, you Roy. These beautiful 999 silver ingots celebrate the engines from the world famous VT Railroad and honor Nevada's sesquicentennial. These limited edition treasures can be purchased only at the Marshall Mint in Virginia City, Nevada. Or visit us at marshallmint.com to get yours today. Welcome back. Another episode of Old Tales of Nevada, Past and Present. And Hugh Roy, forgive me, I interrupted you in order to no, take a break. No you were about to ask a question. I get curious to know whether, you know, you guys are skiers or snowboarders or both. Or, because we're all fairly older, actually. And, uh, well, oh, speak for yourself here, right? <laughs> Omer's old. <laughs> Omer, you ski, don't you? You, yes. don't, you don't snowboard. Yeah, but not to. You don't snowboard, though, do you? Not, not I can to ski, the level, but I, I was not to the level snowboard. he skis at. I bet he's really good, yeah. Tell us about your experience, for well, example, you know, at Steamboat Springs this year. D- during the break, uh, we were talking about our student body on Incline Campus. At least uh, 90% of them are either skiers or snowboarders. And yeah. Probably snowboarding is a little bit more popular, but uh, and many of the faculty and staff, and I count myself. Among them, in fact, I had an opportunity uh, to practice with uh, our ski team uh, over the winter. So during the week, you know, we would uh, several times a week I was able to get up there. Uh, they practice on Diamond Peak, and they open up early, six six thirty, quarter till seven. We get a couple hours of practice in before they open up to the general public, and then I go back to my office, and the students have to go to class. Uh, so it was, it was a good opportunity for me to hone my uh, downhill racing skis. I'm a giant slalom skier, and I've been participating in NASTAR for the last couple of years. Uh, I did very well uh, the season before this last one when I was uh, still in Ohio, skiing out of Ohio, and qualified for the national championships and took silver in, in my division. Uh, and this year I had high hopes uh, for uh, going for gold, uh, and uh, we were at Steamboat for NASCAR National Championships and uh, had a bad, just had a bad, uh, <laughs> bad two days. Actually, a bad, bad one day. Second day was all right, but didn't uh, turn out the way I wanted it to. But I'll be back next year, and Bronco's going to coach me up some more. And, uh, well, I saw a photograph of you at Steamboat Springs. You look pretty damn good in that photograph. Not, not, not good enough. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I probably made up for it looks when I lacked in ability uh, that particular day. But, yeah, uh, a lot you, of fun. You know, I think back to the the Winter Olympics two years ago. Had the Lake Tahoe Basin, I'm going to include Reno, and the various resorts around Lake Tahoe. Had it been an independent nation state, we would rank seventh in the world <laughs> in number yeah. of medals. That's right. I mean, that shows what a mecca this is and how you can attract really world-class skiers from overseas as well as domestically and uh, I know that's happened yeah to qual I mean to qualify this year for NASTAR to go to steamboat I was racing out of uh, Squaw Valley and uh, Winter Olympics 1960 Squaw Valley and it was uh, high, it's a highly competitive environment because you're right uh, skiers from all around the world uh, go there and, and uh, it was uh, it was a challenge it will be next year as well well, those kids are going to keep you young anyway. That's, <laughs> that's, that's right. You're going to chase them along the ski runs. You know, that's an interesting point. That, that's really what has kept me in higher ed. Uh, for, I've been in uh, post-secondary education one form or another now for well over 30 years. I think one of the things that's kept me uh, doing what I'm doing and enjoying it so much is being around students, which is why, you know, I enjoyed the opportunity. I've enjoyed the opportunity to to live in the dorms for a while and get to know them, you know, I, I'm sort of living, reliving my college days to some, to some extent. <laughs> I bet the kids uh, love you though. So, oh yeah. So it's they're they're great, uh, and you know, it's all about them and providing them with the best possible experience. Because those of us who've been through it, those of us who've pursued our careers, we know, we know how valuable you know it's been. And so when I look at, you know, when I think about our students, I know what's in front of them, and I know how valuable their current experience at SNC is going to be to them. Even if they don't always realize it fully, I know it because 
and you know it, Omer, because you've done it, and every, you know, all a lot of our viewers uh, of the show have, know exactly what I'm talking about. So knowing that, knowing what's coming for them in the future, has really kept me very involved in, in what I do and, and enjoying it. There's, there's a great satisfaction you get from that. You know, we're. I spent 20 years associated, as you know, uh, in the municipal fire service where you know, I used to run into burning buildings for a living and things like that. <laughs> so I was in the business of, of saving lives, which is which is a great calling. Right. I, I really enjoyed yeah. it. Now you're in the business of saving minds. <laughs> <laughs> now I'm in the business of changing. Changing minds. Changing. You know, that's what Sierra Nevada College does. We change lives, and we provide for the futures of our young people going forward. And I think we can all appreciate the value of that in today's world uh, with the things that are going on politically, with the things that are going on environmentally, with the things that are going on financially. I don't have to tell you what these things are. Everybody knows because all you got to do is watch TV for, for 15 minutes on any given night and, and these issues are in front of us. So, the, you know, the future of not just Nevada and California and the region or even the country. The future of the world depends on these young men and women uh, and what they can do to address the challenges uh, that, I just, that I just mentioned. So Very true. Very that's true. what this is really all about at the end of the day. Well, our democracy is dependent upon an educated citizenry. Exactly. <laughs> our democracy is dependent on it. Our economy is dependent on it. Our society is dependent on it. And when we don't invest enough into it, uh, it's, it starts to break down. Uh, it's as simple as that. And you can see uh, you can see evidence of that in the history of the world, going back to the great civilizations. And, Absolutely. Uh, so uh, that's why I do what I do, uh, and that's why I enjoy it as much as I enjoyed uh, my affiliation with the fire service all those years. The second closest thing to being able to save a life is being able to change a life. And that's what we do at Sierra Nevada College. That's fantastic. With respect to uh, a few other sports questions, I know you have a lacrosse team up there. You know, I'm glad you mentioned that. Yeah, I, I talked a lot about our ski and snowboard teams being perennial national championship caliber, and they, and they are, and they have been for, for decades now. But I'll tell you, the, the untold story is our men's lacrosse. They've only, they just finished their third season and they have been to their national championship for the last two years now. And they've only been around for three seasons. As a small startup, remarkable, a remarkable story. As a hard sport, very hard sport. Yes. Uh, a great, a great sport to watch though. You know, if, if, for the viewers out there, if you've never uh, had a chance to watch lacrosse, it's, it's a very fast paced, high scoring, it's a terrific sport to watch. I had a chance to go down to uh, UC Irving uh, in early May to the national championships because, once again, like last year, they, our men's lacrosse team qualified for the national championships, uh, and they were very competitive. It's almost unheard of, though, that a, such a new sport like that would rocket to the top of their, uh, of their division and their conference and, and qualify for a national championship point. That's fantastic. Uh, so early. So, I see another legacy sport in the making here going forward. When we do this show years from now, we'll be talking about skiing still, we'll still be talking about snowboarding, and we'll be talking about lacrosse. I have read that in Massachusetts, lacrosse is now more popular than football on the high school level. Isn't that something? In, you know, it's, it's very popular on the East Coast. Yes. So schools like Middlebury and so forth. Mm -hmm. But it's, it's rapidly gaining popularity on the West Coast as well. Yes. If you go up and down California... Uh, it's up, up and coming. So Berkeley, Stanford. I think yep. uh, I think we hit. We're there at the right time. Uh, we've got a great coach who really built this from the ground up. We've got terrific uh, 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 student athletes participating in it, uh, and uh, it's it's uh, it's going to be the next marquee sport, crown jewel. Uh, before we end this program, I'd like you to talk about academic honors that have occurred over the past year. You know, we just had uh, we just had graduation uh, a couple of weekends ago. Great event, uh, outdoor, very very Tahoe sort of setting. Uh, every year we have a number of students who graduate with honors. Uh, what we're particularly proud of, in so much as uh, 
you know, our student athletes go to national championships. One of the equivalents of that that happens virtually every year for, for a number of years now is we have students who compete in a, in a business plan competition. So the Governor's Cup. Oh, great. Uh, the D.W. Reynolds uh, Governor's Cup competition every year in Nevada. So they compete uh, against UNR students, UNLV students, uh, students from community colleges in Nevada. And just as our ski and snowboard teams are perennial champions every year, so are our students in this That's in, in the Governor's important. Cup business yeah. plan competition. That's yeah. Once again, we took first at That's the undergraduate fantastic. level in the in the business plan competition, and once again, we took first uh, in the lieutenants cups, uh, and those uh, those students went on to the tri-state competition. So, while it's important, you know, for success in the field of competition that we talked about from an athletic standpoint, uh, to be sure, we are equally strong on the academic side, and and the annual business plan competition is a great example of that. Over. What are some of the other institutions against whom Sierra Nevada College is competing in the Governor's Cup competition and the Tri-State competition and so on? Well, in Nevada, obviously, uh, we, we compete against uh, all the Nevada schools, so UNR and UNLV and, and so forth. Uh, when, uh, when we qualify for Tri-State, we're competing against schools uh, in Oklahoma, Arkansas, and, uh, and Nevada. So it, it certainly broadens the level of competition. And th those states are all a result of, of where uh, the Reynolds Foundation has a home, you know, has had traditional headquarters and so forth. So it's associated with that. Before, look, I'm going to interrupt because we're about out of time. And I want you to just mention the Tour de Tahoe. Oh, yeah. And so, I hope you brought a jersey with you. I, I did. So. Here's a new thing we're doing this year. We're gonna we're forming Team Eagle, which will be made up of students, faculty, staff. We've got some board members who are gonna ride, some alums, friends of the college. Team Eagle, we're gonna ride Tour de Tahoe, which is an annual ride around the shore of the lake, what seventy-two 70, miles. Seventy-two miles. One day. Uh, it's been going on for a number of years, but this will be the first year, September 11th. That. Uh, we'll have a team out there. Uh, we're going to do it for uh, let's close the program money with for uh, scholarships. You holding that up? Yeah, pretty awesome. Team Eagle. What's the back look like? This is our team yeah. jersey. Team Eagle. Team Eagle. Eagle. Nevada Jack College Jack. Tahoe. So Omer, mm -hmm. I'm expecting you to lead us out mm -hmm. uh, on your bicycle. Lead Team Eagle as an honorary <laughs> member there of, you go, uh, Omer. of Team Eagle. You got it. <laughs> and we're doing we're doing it as a fundraiser for scholarships. And to raise awareness here in Nevada College in the basin uh, as, a, as a PR thing. Thank you, Alan. We're out of time. Wish we had more time. Yeah. Join us again next week for another episode of Old Towns of Nevada, Past and Present. Thank you for, for watching. <laughs>